Hello everyone, and welcome back to a Let's Play of Mega Man X with your host of validation X145. Uh, this is going to be the last episode of this game, of this Let's Play. And first off, we are going to do some stage differences, starting with Flame Mammoth. Um, Flame Mammoth stage is affected by Chill Penguin, so we will be finding out what I was talking about earlier. Um, normally you would defeat Chill Penguin first, you do get the speed boots for it. Um, however, if you are new to the game and you decide not to get the speed boots, you will find that the bottom of the level is covered with lava. Um, the lava is not insta-kill, but it does mega damage, so it's best you stay out of it. Um, and it's also a lot harder to avoid, considering that you don't have the speed boost to use, unless you decide to grab them before coming to this level and then not defeating Chill Penguin. So, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, all the areas, however, that were originally covered in ice on the floor are now covered in lava, and there are a few quirks that come with it. For instance, fire waves that come up and destroy parts of the platform. Um, yeah. Another thing about not having the speed boots is you don't have access to a lot of the power-ups. For instance, I'm pretty sure you can't get to the um, sub-tank that is way up there on the left. And also because of it, you cannot get this little heart tank here. Um, I've tried many a time without the speed boots to get it while the lava was there, and every time I died. It's pretty difficult. So, yeah. So that's really about it for this level. Um, really not much else to see, but I want to talk about the speed boots again. Um, as we've seen before, the speed boots are very good at um, increasing maneuverability in the game, and a lot of what you'd normally be able to dodge with them, you suddenly find the game being a lot more difficult because you can't jump over them like you normally would. So I would, I died right here where I normally wouldn't have. I would have been able to leap right across it, but you know. Next stage. Now it's time to move on to, if I could pick it. Spark Mandrel Stage. Uh, Spark Mandrel Stage is affected by Storm Eagle Stage, and we are going to see what it looks like when before you defeat um, Storm Eagle. Note the lack of a ship. <laughs> um, if you do not defeat Storm Eagle before going to Spark Mandrel Stage, you will find that you will have these electric charges flying across the floor at you. Um, as you see, they are really more of a nuisance than anything. Uh, they don't hurt you all that much. But they do um, slow you down, and they can event they can sometimes get you into a loop of being damaged, and it makes, the makes it a lot more difficult to fight the enemies. Because you're trying to dodge these little electric charges all the time. Um... The blackouts that you saw in my origin in my first few episodes, that occurs normally. Um, however, blackouts do not occur as frequently. It's only in certain stages, or um, certain sections of the, of the stage, my bad. So, yeah. That is the first major difference. Um, however, the second major difference comes up here at the mini-boss. Um, whereas before he was kind of wandering around, kind of making this little spark here, now that there is power, he can emit a very powerful electrical charge. It doesn't hurt you for a huge amount of damage, but it does hurt. And getting stuck there 
in his bubble suddenly has a lot more meaning of escaping them. And once again, without the um, speed boots, it's a lot harder to dodge. So, but as I prove here, it's not undoable to defeat this guy. You, It's not mandatory that you need the speed boots, but it does help a lot, so... Yeah. And a free man. Yay! So yeah, that's pretty much it I have to um, show off for this level. Um, I just decided to show the entire level because you don't have the blackouts that you would otherwise if you defeated Storm Eagle and then went to this stage. And uh, if I sound a little weird, it's because I woke up and I suddenly had a cold. So my nose is kind of feeling a little dry and stuffy right now. But, uh... I don't feel bad enough to not record, so, you know. Now here, I can more easily show off the heart tank that I collected on this stage. Um, you cannot collect it without the speed boots. I tried multiple times. Um, but if you jump off the little electrical thing there, you can dodge it. You can uh, get up to it if you have the speed boots on. And here I was showing off some of the other places that I didn't know the little dashing guys could get to, or would appear from. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the boss. Um, I just want to show again how difficult it is without the speed boots. Um, as you all know, Spark Mandrel is a very fast, um, he is a very fast maverick. And we normally would be too, but we don't have the speed boots or his weakness, which makes this fight pretty much impossible. Uh, I'm sure you could do it if you had the skills and everything, but I certainly didn't when I tried to defeat him there. So speed boots are definitely very important. And uh, just a quick rewind. Going back to the beginning of my Let's Play, I'm sure you all remember very vividly having to walk through this entire level. Very boring. Ouch. Um, there is a reason for this. Um, there actually is no change, I believe, in Chill Penguin stage if you defeat another Maverick or not before you go to his stage. Um, however, you do get a power-up which you kind of need for another observable level change. Um, of course, the speed boots again. And that will be used for viewing the change in Chameleon, uh, Sting Chameleon stage. So, yeah, one nice thing about having the speed boost is that you get to sit past everything so much faster. You don't have to deal with all this extra crap. <laughs> um, yeah. So there is a reason that they made the speed boots kind of a mandatory thing. Because uh, it does make the entire game a lot easier and pretty much accessible to everyone. I'm sure you could actually do it without getting the speed boots until the last Maverick, but um, the speed boots are a mandatory upgrade. Which is perfectly fine since they plop it right in the middle of your path, you know. So, yeah. Get the speed boots. Retrospective. And now we will be moving on to Sting Chameleon stage to look at the level change that I was talking about. Um, Sting Chameleon stage is affected by Launch Octopus. Um, it's much more of a minor change, 
but it's still very important if you're looking for a specific power-up, namely the heart tank. Um, as you guys will remember, I showed off the heart tank in, I believe it was part three of my Let's Play, I'm not remembering correctly, I think. But um, the heart tank is down here, and it's impossible to get if you don't have water that you would get after defeating Launch Octopus. Impossible to reach. So, yeah, you need to defeat Launch Octopus in order to get that heart tank. And now, we will be moving on. That is enough of the stage, to, of the stage changes. And I will be talking more about um, some of the features in Armored Armadillo stage, and then moving on to weapons. First off... Um, just some little enemy things. So let's get past all these little bats flying around. Uh, I was originally going to show off some of the stuff that can happen, but um, yeah, those spikes with the guys—they're insta kill. So if you if you are ahead of them, run like hell. And of course, since they are spikes, they cannot be damaged. But yeah. So here, um, we are looking at one of the few cameo appearances of the original Mega Man series, namely the little bat. Um, the little bat is the design of, I think, all of the Mega Man series. I could be wrong. I know it was in Mega Man 7, and I think, I'm pretty sure it was in Mega Man 5 and before that. But um, it is the only bat of its kind in this entire game. It is a cameo to the original Mega Man series, and it has a very high chance of dropping um, extra lives. So if you want to farm for extra lives, you can do it here. The cap for lives is just nine, but <laughs> nine lives is plenty enough, unless you can be as horrible as me at times and just die over and over at the same part. But even then, it's not, um, it is certainly not a bad cap. So, you know you've collected enough when it doesn't ding, like it did there, you just kind of pick it up and no, and no sound happens. And here, um, this is something that I will be talking about with weapons. Um, some people on my video commented that you can use the fire wave to destroy um, these sub-bosses and other sub-bosses. I knew that already, I just um, didn't feel like showing it off until right about now. So thank you for reminding me. Um, fire wave for those guys really kills them fast, and there's also a... It works really well on certain sub-bosses, not so well on others. Um, the... I'm trying to remember. The uh, Storm Tornado and the Fire Wave are really good at taking down sub-bosses. It really depends, though. Fire Wave is really good at taking down those guys. So, you know, you can get rid of him and then go to the heart tank up here. And voila. Um, I'm going to talk about more about weapons. Here we have the odd weakness of two bosses here, the Boomerang Cutter. Um, it doesn't actually do that much damage, it only does one damage. However, hit him three times, and he suddenly loses one of his special abilities. Voila! He loses his tentacles, and he can no longer, um, he can no longer launch homing fish at you, and he can no longer go into his invincible whirlpool thing, where he can potentially suck you up and drain you while healing himself. So it makes him a lot more predictable, um, definitely useful for this boss, and then you can just spam the crap out of him with the rolling shield. So, so 
So yeah, I actually managed to kill him without using all my rolling shield. Amazing. <laughs> Alright. And then we will be moving on to the next boss that is affected by the boomerang cutter in such a way. Um, in just a moment. That boss is Flame Mammoth. Yes, Flame Mammoth. Once again, you have the same principle. Um, use the boomerang cutter, hit him three times. It does not do any sort of ex extra damage, but it does um, inhibit him quite a bit. So you hit him three times with the boomerang cutter, and he loses his trunk. He can no longer fling tar at you, and he can no longer change the direction of the conveyor belt. Quite personally, however, I don't like to do it for this guy, simply because um, he becomes a lot more aggressive. He does not give you quite as much opportunity where he's just standing around and doing things that really don't affect the fight all that much. Um, now, all he can do is jump around and, um, for redundancy's sake, fire, fire at you. And that is actually in my opinion more of an uh, more of a problem than anything else when he's changing the conveyor belt he just stands there yells and it's perfect o it's a perfect opportunity to hit him for some extra damage and again when he's slinging the tar the tar doesn't hurt you and it as you saw in my last episode it's very unlikely that you'll actually damage him or uh, that he'll actually set it on fire and hurt you for quite a bit here I am showing off the final thing. Uh, this is Vile's alternate weakness, the electric spark. Um, if you are really concerned th about not having your homing missile for Boomerang Kawanga at the end, um, at his boss fight, then you can go ahead and use the electric spark. And it doesn't do a super huge amount of damage, but it still gets the job done. And it can blow a vial away. And then we'll be moving on to the next topic. Remember in Flame Mammoth stage how you got the um, X Buster upgrade? If you did not grab it here, if you did not grab it, you would get it here. The X Buster upgrade, aka the Zero Buster, is also a mandatory upgrade. So you get some slightly different dialogue, and Zero offers you his Buster and you essentially get the same thing that you did in Flame Mammoth Stage. It may be a slightly more powerful. I don't know if it only applies to the Mega Man Maverick Hunter X series, but um, yeah. There's really no difference between here, between this one and the one that you would get in Flame Mammoth Stage. So here we are going to check out what happens it's actually rather anticlimactic as soon as I can get up there. One of the problems with this um, one upgrade, it's really hard to get up there sometimes. I don't know why I was screwing up so much, but I just could not get on there for the life of me. And you're only seeing a certain, you're only seeing about a minute's worth of it. I was standing here for literally five minutes trying to get up here, which is uh, quite a waste of time. But, um, yeah. If you have the Zero Buster upgrade, then you can't get it. And now, time for the Hadouken armor part. Um, remember what I was talking about? Way back in the day when we were fighting Armored Armadillo? We are going to finally get that part. Yeah, it is arguably the broken... It is arguably a broken part of the game. Um, it's almost a cheat. Essentially what the Hidoken Armor does is it destroys bosses in one hit. What you have to do to collect it, you have to grab that um, health pellet up there four times with the following requirements. One of those times you have to have all upgrades for... Um, I don't think you need all the Maverick's abilities However, you do need all of the other armor upgrades, so head, speed boots, um, chest armor, and the zero buster. 
And you also need all of the heart tanks and sub tanks. As you can see here, I do not have all the sub tanks. However, that does not matter. And we are going to be going here for the last time, grabbing the energy pellet, and I'm kind of showing off the uh, storm tornado here. It is not nearly as effective against this guy as the fire wave is. However, other bosses are definitely more affected um, by the storm tornado. For example, the serpent in launch octopus's stage, and also the um, also the electric blob in Spark Mandrel stage, or again the ship that we had in Launch Octopus's stage where you would get down to the health tank. Or the, uh, I'm sorry. To the, yeah, to the health tank. Heart tank. So, yeah, you can, you collect the pellet four times. Um, I guess you could call it technically five, but you only collect it four times. The next time you go there, you will find a nice surprise waiting for you. So, again, Use the fire weapon on those guys, it's really the most effective means. And I've failed. <laughs> Even the best of us have our bad days. Um, I'm trying to remember what other mini bosses are affected. I'm trying to remember any, any other mini bosses at all. It's rather sad, actually. <sighs> But yeah, um, Firewave not so useful here, <laughs> obviously. And kind of doing a speed comparison, we are actually faster than the Rolling Shield. Um, not a huge, not a huge amount faster, but still faster nonetheless. But you come up here for the fifth time, and you have all the requirements. You will find this Doctor Light capsule, and he's looking like he's in a. Street Fighter outfit almost? Yeah. This is the Hadouken upgrade. Arguably the most broken piece of this entire game, if you don't enter cheat codes. So, as in the original Street Fighter game, um, you use the combo for it, um, the direction you want to face, then press down, then press the direction you want to face, in combination with the attack button and that will allow you to use the Hadouken. However, prerequisites for using the Hadouken, you must be at full health for it, it to work. But, if you do have it at full, if you are at full health and you can use the Hadouken, it takes down any boss in one hit. So, Boomerang Kawanga, gone. Um, this next boss here, the little spider here, one hit, gone. However, this does show off some of the inopportunities of the Hadouken. The, uh, the Hadouken is slow, it does take a while to fire off, and it does become impractical for certain enemies. And instead of using the Hadouken, you can accidentally dash forward and fire normally, rather than using it. But, um, you know, it is still a one-hit kill ability if you have full health, so really damaging and really, really overpowered piece of technology. So thank you, Dr. Light, for allowing us to cheat the game a little bit and just destroy absolutely everything. You are a wonderful guy. And down the little spider goes. So the Hadouken um, is more a weapon of opportunity, so, you know, just keep that in mind. But you also cannot use it in the air. However, it is still a very powerful weapon, again, as we will see in a moment with Chill Penguin. Remember this guy? He's not that difficult to begin with, but, you know, he's still a pushover. But he makes it even more so with the Hadouken. One hit and he's down. Yeah. Very, very easy. And to the point of game breaking.
The thing is though, it's not mandatory, and if you have this part, you don't have to use it, considering that you have it on a combo. But there goes Storm Eagle! Why wouldn't you if you want to have an easy run through of this game? You know? Just had look in everything in your way, and no problems will ensue. Oh, and remember this guy, Launch Octopus? I hated this guy so much! Guess what? You four tentacled thing. You're mine. Oh, yes. Suck on that. Unfortunately, revenge is not always sweet. You know. And again! Proving the power of the Hadouken. Apparently, Street Fighters are incredibly powerful in the Mega Man universe. And Hadouken! He's down! Yes! Another boss fight diminished to a second. And then we move on to the Sigma final battle. Guess what? Your little puppy dog? Dead! I had no trouble. And you, Sigma, you can brag all you want. But guess what? I have the power of Dr. Light at my side. And you have no idea just how strong he is. And guess what? You're dead. However, at this point, it kind of stops with the practicality. Um, there are some bosses where it is rather impractical, actually. Where you're better off fighting them, and this is one of them. The final Sigma bat the final Sigma battle here. You cannot actually hit um, Sigma's final form with the Hadouken. Um, it's very difficult to even attempt to use it on these uh, claws. I was impressed that I could do it without getting damaged. Um, and it is rather a waste of sub tanks. The claws do hurt you for a lot, even with the um, special armor that reduces damage by a further 50%, thanks Dr. Light. And because it is so slow, you can end up taking damage from the claws before you have a chance to use your Hadouken. So instead, you can either um, use um, the Zero Buster with a full charge shot and do one point of damage. Or you can use the Rolling Shield and take down Sigma. It's a lot better. It's a lot more practical. That was pretty much at the peak right there, and it did not hit him. So, you know. And the problem with it is, you cannot use it while you are in the air. You must be on the ground. You must, be, you must have firm footing beneath your feet. And if you're in the air, you cannot do that. So, you know. It really doesn't work. So, just go ahead and use um, the rolling shield for this guy and take him down in a slightly less amount of time. So, this is just one of the impracticalities, however, of the Hadouken. Um, other bosses, you will find it's just about about just as difficult um, and we will showcase them in a moment once I'm stupid enough and use my last sub tank for the sole purpose of trying to um, use the Hadouken on this guy and essentially you just give up it's not worth it we will first be showcasing Spark Mandrel in this charade of how powerful the Hadouken is. If you can manage to hit him, it is it will one hit kill him, but Spark Mandrel is so freaking fast. It's really hard to throw one in before he gets a punch in. As you can see, I um, load the game several times trying to get trying to get him. None of my attempts are successful. I'm sure there's someone out there who could manage to pull it off. I'm not one of them. So, yeah. I mean, there's just so many opportunities where he can damage you and you can't throw you can't throw one in. So, 
you're better off just icing this guy to death, or, um, if you want, using your X Buster. It's really not worth it for this guy. <laughs> I think we get the point, but you know. See, one of the, one of the opportunities would probably be right there where you're um, where he's coming down from the ceiling. But you know, I can e I can ice him just as easily. It takes longer, but he still can't hurt me for much. And you know, why bother using the Hadouken when you can make it this much easier? It just makes it the boss the uh, battle a little bit slower. But you know, why bother? Now we will be showing off Armored Armadillo. Armored Armadillo is probably the biggest candidate of why his armor is so powerful. Because... As soon as he gets out of his rolling ball form, I'll tell you guys why. First off, you can't hit him while he's rolling around. But he blocks it with his armor. If he has his armor, you cannot use the Hadouken against him, because it will be made ineffective by his armor. So, you cannot do anything against him while he's in this form. Um, however, if you have the electric spark, you can shock him and remove his armor, and then just blast him away like you normally would with any other boss with the Hadouken. Um, then it will be a one-hit kill. But while he has his armor on, you cannot damage him with the Hadouken whatsoever. So, you know. So again, just use the electric spark on him, get rid of his armor, and then you can blast him away with the Hadouken. And uh, he should go down pretty easy. Yeah, I got none. <laughs> That's also another thing. Be careful of bosses and vulnerability periods. Um, sometimes you will accidentally shoot before using your Hadouken, and that can cause problems. Um, the pause there where you're about to use your Hadouken can um, give the boss an opportunity to hit you. And because they're invulnerable after you shot them, it doesn't work. It just passes right through them. Another boss where it's really impractical to use this is Sting Chameleon. Um, first off, he is hardly ever on the ground. And second, I find it really difficult at least to avoid being damaged. So, you know, why even bother when you can just take him out with the boomerang cutter and get him in a nice quick cycle of damage and stuff. So, once again, not practical. And finally, this guy. Um, this boss you cannot use it against for the simple fact of you're not on the ground. Yeah, um, you can you can take out both of his eyes with the Hadouken if you can manage it. Um, however, again, it is rather impractical for this boss fight and. You may as well just use the boomerang, uh, not the boomerang counter, the uh, chameleon sting on him. And with his nose, you cannot hit it with the Hadouken because you're not on the ground. So, yeah. So just use his weakness, the chameleon sting, and you will be good to go. I don't remember. Yeah, I died. <laughs> Stupidly, of course. The final boss that I will be showing the um, not usability of for that was weird grammar issues is this guy. I wish I could remember for the life of me what his name is because it's something awesome. I know that much. 
you never have an opportunity to use the Hadouken on this guy. Um, that would require that you are standing on his lower plat on his lower part, while his head part is right next to it and not on the platform with you. And as you can imagine, that is pretty rare. So I would just I would recommend just going ahead with the um, boomerang cutter and cutting it down that way. Thank you all for watching. This is the conclusion to my Mega Man X playthrough. And I will probably be doing the next several games in the series. Um, hope you all enjoyed this Let's Play, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys. Bye for now.